Hello guys, I'm an artist Jaroslav Ternovsky and today we're going to paint a wonderful pomegranate. We're gonna reproduce the effect of light. I'm gonna get the very saturated painting. I'm gonna show some tricks how to get as saturated hues as possible. It's gonna be a very wonderful journey. Let's go. Okay guys, uh, now we're going to start with the composition and as we see, the still life is over there, over the palette. It's small, but I can I'll reproduce it in much uh, larger composition here on the canvas. I've got a relatively big canvas, it's 50 by 50 centimeters. And I'm going to fill it with this wonderful pomegranate. Pomegranate. <coughs> Okay guys, now we're going to start with the composition and we've got the still life over there, over the palette, you can observe it. I'm going to reproduce it on my relatively big canvas. It's 50 by 50 centimeters. Uh, for this small object, it's quite a huge uh, canvas, so we're gonna enlarge it and it, it will help us visually perceive the object um, in a very bright way. So let's start with the main body of this pomegranate. Uh, first of all, I'm going to jot down a composition. So first, I focus on the large forms and I use the uh, scarlet as the main color for my composition. And by the way, as you're observing my palette, let's go through it briefly. I'm going to use Scarlet for this painting, Mother Lake, Orange Cadmium, Ultramarine, Violet, Burnt Umber, uh, Yellow Ochre or Gold Ochre and Cadmium Yellow. And of course, Titanium White. Uh, as I see, now my composition is here, but I still need to put uh, shadows from my main objects and as we see we've got backlight in our composition so the shadows um, fall into the foreground and those shadows are going to make a nice effect of transparency of irradiation of this pomegranate so something like that, so we've got main object, we've got shadows here and maybe one of the shadows will just will go outside the canvas here. Right. Now we can observe the whole canvas as we proceed. So the next step, I want to get as bright color as, as, as possible. And for this uh, reason, I use a scarlet and I don't mix it with any other colors, either yellow or white. Look, I'm going to apply it in a very thin layer. I'm going to rip my brush against the canvas and it produces the brightest color as possible because when you mix this color with other others on the on your palette the others pigments interfere the brightness of the mm, main color and it reduces its saturation so if you want very vivid very saturated hue, you don't need to mix it, but if you want it lighter, as you see on the canvas, it looks much lighter than on the palette. And by the way, the canvas is white and the palette is gray. You must perceive it much more brighter than on the canvas. And this effect is possible because I apply a very thin layer of the semi-transparent paint to the canvas. And what I'm showing now is grains of the 
from a grenade. Look, I'm just having fun and make a decision where they're gonna be, those red and ruby kernels. Here we are. Something like that. We've got a smiley clown face here with the nose, eyes and the mouth. So it's better to get rid of such uh, associations if possible. Now we've got a clown with a red, the red teeth. Okay, so let's move on. We've got the part of the pomegranate here and also some grains. which are, which stuck to the piece of this nice fruit laying on the table. Here we are. Well, the, the next step might be the peel of the pomegranate. And of course, I'm going to make it less brighter. So I'm adding burnt umber to decrease the saturation, as you see and to enhance darkness, to decrease the light and to enhance darkness because the peel is darker than the than the grains of the pomegranate. So here we are. Well, we've got the part of the peel which is well lit here. Uh, at the top of the pomegranate, but I think we, we're going to work with it a bit later. So the next step is the peel of the of its sector. I don't pay too much attention to the brushwork, just apply the paint as thin as, as possible in order to produce this transparency. Here we are. We can, now we can switch to the shadows, the falling shadows here. We use ultramarine plus umber and some, some remnants of the scarlet on my brush will interfere the, the color here and you see it's not just gray which it might have been while we are using burnt umber and plus ultramarine but now you see this kind of colorful shadow okay and here another shadow they are the darkest so far the darkest areas uh, on our canvas And my task is to cover the whole canvas with the thin layer of paint as fast as possible. Okay, we're working on a still life. We can work uh, on it many hours, but often the artists don't have many hours. When you paint a flower, for example, you've got that time until the flower until the flower dies and gets its wrinkles so you need to paint it on time and the pomegranate loses its freshness so we don't have many days and hours to paint it if we talk about plein air work so we just got an hour or an hour and a half not more well we've got shadows here or model of our shadows, they aren't uh, very deliberately uh, painted yet and now what we need to do is to uh, cover our background and now I'm going to add the titanium white. Look, 
I try to not to add it as long as possible so please do not overuse uh, white colors because they might cause you big problems because it's very difficult to get rid of them afterwards after you applied them so that's why you need to be careful with them well and I do not paint uh, I got very dark areas behind my pomegranate but I don't try to to paint it as dark as possible because I've got the darkest area just my falling shadows gonna be my darkest uh, areas on this canvas and well it's your decision how to paint it of course the nature the still life the real still life we use it as a reference it gives us a lot of tips but you are as an artist you must decide what to paint what not to paint and what color you use in your in your painting so your colors must work best for your composition for your idea so my idea is to show the illumination to show the transparency and freshness and juiciness of the pomegranate so in order to fulfill this aspirations I'm going to combine different colors and, and you see I just started applying uh, dark rose hues here and uh, yellowish hues uh, because they will be helpful for us to show the radiation and illuminance of the of the grains of our pomegranate as you can see as you can observe while I'm working working through the background the pomegranate itself and its grains um, become brighter and brighter because it was hard to get it to get the brightness of the pomegranate while it, it was painted on a blank yellow or uh, white canvas so for that reason uh, the the artists often cover the canvas with a thin layer of the paint and you can't uh, if you do this you can't get the brightest the the most vivid con uh, color i mean rubbing the the brush against the canvas because the color underneath will be constantly visible through the semi-transparent paint so just be careful with that and the same procedure over there maybe a bit lighter why because the pomegranate here is gonna be darker and that's an option in in reality well in reality it's a coincidence but I see that that my drapery is ending here and the white wall interferes but of course white wall is never white on the painting as you see it's it's quite dirty and well we need those dirty colors to enhance the beautiness the beauty of the main object of the colors on the main object so don't be afraid of dirty colors even on white objects like a, like a wall so it's a coincidence but if I had um, let's say if I had the, the drapery there as dark as I as I have on the left hand so I would paint it uh, again lighter to enhance the shadows on the pomegranate so as you see I used lighter colors ultramarine plus titanium white again careful with white not to add it too much professionals say that try to add less white to your painting uh, so later, later you can add more if you if you want if you wish but it's easier I mean in oils to add more white than 
than dark. So if you overuse white, it's, it's very difficult to get rid of it. It, it mixes constantly with the next layers of, um, of paint. It uh, reduces their uh, saturation henceforth and, and you can't get the, the bright and the clear coloring on your paintings. Yes, you can, but adding too much paint on the surface, which is not always necessary and not always nice. And as you see, I'm starting, starting working on the uh, foregrounds here, and the foregrounds are well lit. They've got this special hue, which is uh, rosy, and so I'm going to paint it rosy, maybe a bit purple, I'll using ultramarine plus Mother Lake. Now, here we are, this nice and beautiful color combination. Oh, we've got those, almost forget, we've got those uh, mm, grains here, and I'll almost Yeah, I almost got lost of them because if I just cover, if I cover this area with titanium white or with mixture which has titanium white in itself, it would be impossible to paint those bright and saturated grains. Let's experiment. Let's see whether am I right or wrong. So let's imagine that we covered. Here is the area and I'm going to, to paint now a grain of pomegranate. Ah, you see, you see, like what the titanium white does, it interferes in my color and I just can't, you see, I can't paint it as vividly as I did before, so I try to rub it in, but oh no, it's still pale. Uh, if we compare it, compare it to the grains which we painted, just rubbing the uh, paint against the canvas w without any white in it. Well, so the only one way I have just to add a lot of scarlet here, just in a thick way, but again, you see that those grains, they remain more transparent and even brighter than that one which I painted using the thick layer of, of paint. Here we are, so now the, the difference is clear. Okay, but I don't want it now. And here, it's not, not necessary for me. Well, so I'm going to proceed with the lights on the foreground. And as we've got the source of light just behind the pomegranate, it's somewhere there. Um, I need to show the lightest area. The lightest area can be here. The lightest area of our foreground. Here you see I apply a bit more paint here in a thicker way. Here we are, and again rubbing the brush against the canvas and just cover the other areas with some tone. It's a good idea not to not to leave the pure white areas on your canvas. In order you, if you want to get some glitterings, if you want to get the powerful light, it's better to reduce the light during your first steps. Then you've got wider possibilities, you've got to, to enhance it if you need. So here we are. Here is our... Here is our colored composition. And yet we've got some uh, very light, so blank areas on our pomegranate. But they're not gonna be there for a long time. Here we are. Just cover it with a mixture of ochre and titanium white. And here I want darker color, so ultramarine. 
gets into the mixture and turns it into grayish hues. Here we are. Don't afraid of using grays where you don't really see it. For example, um, when I look at this area, I still see the yellow color, but our brain changes the picture, the real picture, and interpret it, and it says, our brain says, well, this peel is yellow there, why do you paint it in gray? But in comparison to the, um, to the other parts of the peel which are well lit, so th those parts, those areas are really more gray. I wouldn't say they are gray, but more gray. As you see, it, it makes the effect of, of volume now. It, it makes this form uh, 3D. It, it helps to percept 3D effect of the form. Again, some lights here. Well, they, they mustn't be as light as the areas which are closer to the source of light. So be careful with that. So I'm getting rid of all the blank areas of the canvas. And we've got one more area there. And we'll use orange, cadmium orange with titanium wire, I guess. Yes, maybe like that. I don't need too much saturation here. I don't need too much contrast here. So let it be just decreased in saturation because of titanium. Now it's my decision, but sometimes it's better not to add titanium and to, to paint in pure colors. Here we are, but I think that a bit of it won't do any harm in this particular situation. Well, every time you paint, every time you are in a constant search for for the best decision in your painting. So we've got a model of our forthcoming pomegranate. All right, let's continue. And next we can provide some detailed colors. I, I, I don't, don't say details, but just detailed coloring. So we need to change the color of the grains here. We just, oh, you see, as the white color interferes, we need to wipe brush well using a tissue. And then I'm going to add some uh, matter lake here. Oh, you see the, the light the color, I mean titanium white interferes, so I need to, to change the brush here. I've got a clean brush. And let's compare. Oh, much nicer. You see that when white color do not interfere as much. So here we are. So we need some darker areas. Darker areas. I even can use burnt umber to enhance its darkness, especially next to the peel here and perhaps here don't need too much saturation here again some darker areas here and there some darker areas here So I just start breaking it, breaking it up into smaller parts, which I find interesting. Yes. Well, let's move on with the peel. Again, darker somewhere. So I add just more burnt umber somewhere. I can add ultramarine, not too much. Madder Lake. Here. 
Here we are. Yes. As you see, I just paint the round shape form using not curves but straight lines with visible angles. And they help me to perceive the direction where those lines go. It's very useful for artists to to be trained using the straight lines instead of curved lines. Yeah, here we are, and the peel in front part of our pomegranate. Here we are. And again, shadows, they mustn't uh, be the same as, as our, in color as our peel. I will just change it a bit, adding colder tone and even more, even more violet. Again, some areas might be even greenish using a cadmium yellow plus an ultramarine because as you see we've got a very nice reddish peel. Some greenish tone might work well. And I add it deliberately on purpose here and here some green hues look they work nice they work nice Just some changes to the shape itself because the drawing comes along the painting. We didn't do any drawings, any accurate drawings. I mean, while painting, we started directly from the brush, from the paint, uh, making comp showing composition. Then we started filling it with color. That's because I keep my drawing in my mind constantly. I don't forget. Uh, about them, about the lines, about the composition, about the rules of linear perspective. So if you want to do the same, you must keep them in mind, which means you must be trained. Here we are, some lighter area. Good. Good. And also some improvements to the foreground. I can make it darker in the corners uh, in order to enhance the light in the central part of, the, of our painting. Get rid of those uh, strong contrasts here. And again, fall in shadows can soften them to some extent here and there and fall in shadows from our grains well, let's see how it works uh, as you see I can't get the right tone because I paint over over the yellow or over the white color so I need to apply either a thick layer of paint or to get rid of extra white somehow so I will decide to just to cover it with thicker layer of the paint and that's it now it works good well the next step can be the detailing of the work of the artwork I just want to to make this crack deeper here I just maybe some yellowish colors. Here we are. Just want to make make this crack even deeper. Yeah. 
here it is. I broke the, the face of the clown, as you see. Here we are. Must be very careful with our drawing, with our composition. Just add some contrast. We'll see to what extent we need them. Okay. Well, that was our second step. Maybe I'll make this area a bit lighter. I mean, the closer area, the closest area to the source of light. Uh, might be lighter and it might show the, the viewer that light comes from above somewhere from the back of, the, of our painting. Here we are. And it's time to have a detailed drawing, a detailed painting. For this purpose I'm gonna use flat synthetic brush. It allows me to to get the very accurate brush strokes and just using this uh, brush I'm going to to draw to emphasize some grains. I do it carefully not to lose the the brightest hue, the most saturated hue of the color which I got while rubbing the while rub the brush against the surface. So I just need to indicate some grains. I do it here and there. Again, not very accurately. It doesn't mean that you need to show each and every grain you see. You can create your own world. Don't need to copy the our Lord's world. It's impossible and it's unfair because it was created by someone else. So create your own world. And create it in a way you like. As you see, no glitterings so far, I just work on some details and again, I just can switch to the peel, to the grey shadows of the peel and I will emphasize them somewhere, uh, I will add some more yellow, make it more picturesque. As you see, it's, it doesn't consist of just the only grey color. can show some tiny tiny things which are well observed. And even orange can be applied to some areas here, for example, because we've got well-lit area, some pure orange to the top, you see, and to the crown of the pomegranate here. Again, here, as you see, I don't work on one area, only trying to get the best result, then to switch to another. I work constantly with the whole area, with the whole surface of the canvas, with the whole object, emphasize, emphasizing this or that side, or this or that part. No need to to work in one area only. Some lightest hues. 
they aren't glitters yet they're just lightest areas of the pomegranate be careful of using this lightest hues everywhere as you see this hue is very very light and unnecessary on the small part of pomegranate because it distracts our our attention our attention must stick to that part only as the the most interesting one so here we are extra brush strokes then we can play again with some grains as well adding a pure scarlet and if you can see the pure scarlet is darker than the scarlet which is rubbed against as you see look you can see this phenomena, phenomenon here well when I add the pure scarlet it gets a bit darker than the same the very same paint but which was rubbed against the white surface of the canvas in, the, in this in this case it remained it remains the the most saturated and the brightest as possible as bright as possible here okay some dark dark dots As you see, I started breaking up in my object in details at the final stage of the painting. I didn't try doing it at the beginning. And also you need to decide to what extent you want to put your picture in details I just I don't like many details frankly just to some extent what well, well why don't we why don't artists break uh, up their paintings into the tiniest details the thing is well just you deprive your brain of possibility to finish the painting to imagine what's behind it what's behind the inaccurate from the first glance brush strokes what's behind the maybe inaccurate but very artistic coloring some paintings might be done in a few brush strokes but they might produce a very powerful effect of the sunset of a glowing snow for example of well-lit wall of an ancient hut but putting the painting into very details you you deprive the viewer of the possibility of that possibility of imagination and imagination that's a very good thing and you see I'm starting I'm starting getting out the the bright things as you see I just scratch some some uh, grains I didn't plan it but that was uh, like my experiment it's not it's not new technique don't get me don't, don't get me wrong it's a not new technique I didn't invent it but I just try to to get the perception of the pomegranate as as, as bright as possible and I don't want to put it in much details in order to produce the effect of uh, I don't know what brain work or something well I, I want the viewer to complete my painting always so let your viewer to complete to help you to to paint with you the image itself so don't overtell the story so put something curtained, put something behind it and your painting gonna be interesting but 
for this kind of uh, approach you need a well-developed viewer, you need a, an advanced user of the, of the art, just can't tell, uh, can't tell the, the story in a few brush strokes to, to let's say to a dog or to, to an animal at all, the animals they, they perceive the 3D world differently and you can only communicate to human with that. So if you, if you show a portrait of the dog's owner to the dog, the dog wouldn't recognize it because the dog doesn't, doesn't have this culture of uh, art perception. So only you as a human can recognize the uh, portraitee. So what I want to say that not everybody will understand your painting, I mean, if it's not very detailed. Very detailed picture is clear to everyone. But what's your aim? To be clear to everyone who want to produce the amazing effect of, of illusion of nature. Amazing effect of, I don't know, of feelings. You want to communicate with, with viewer. If you want to interact with viewer, so let him think. Let him be developed. It's not, it's not your role to teach people who don't want to be taught. People want to be taught your art. is going to be received with standing ovations. Okay, that's it. I just don't like this, uh, you see, horseshoe kind of line. You see, it, it, it happened just unintentionally, but there mustn't be such a thing like unintentioned brush strokes uh, or I don't know colors so it's just getting rid of this horseshoe effect just adding some extra colors you see this horseshoe maybe we'll add some extra things here and there so what we need to add now is some glitters but of course in artistic manner, so I don't use the only uh, white color, I mix it always with something, in this case I will start with white plus ultramarine, I'll make the very light mixture and we'll add a very light strokes. I just want to get it darker for a while, I using some uh, uh, using Scarlet or Mother Lake, the first some darker areas. Here they are, and then I will make make lighter. So my brush strokes are not gonna be consist of a single a single paint or a single mixture. No, no, no. They're gonna be colorful. So here and then, as you can observe my brush strokes are different somewhere they are very thin and small somewhere they are relatively thick and and big here it is some dark glittering here even darker don't need too much contrast in these areas. Here, here, there. Right. All right. Just wanted to add one more grain here. So now let's continue with highlights. Okay, some 
a few brush strokes over there and over there. And the highlights must be different in color. So I'm adding cadmium yellow plus white, a very light, very light mixture. And it's different in hue, so it must produce, in, must produce the contrasting effect, you see? Somewhere, just I put it in order not to cover the whole blue bluish hue which we already get get to and I'm very careful because we can overdo it easily and that's not good if you overdo it Again, I, if I need to get some areas lighter, I just wipe out the unnecessary thickness of the, of the paint and it makes it possible to, to enhance some areas of oh, the pomegranate. Then well lit areas of the of a grenade here and here. But be careful not to turn it into a lemon or a tangerine or orange. Here. Get. And now, we need to just get rid of some details which are necessary, aren't necessary, here and here. make the edges softer and well just want to want this shadow be uh, darker and wider here why not this greenish hues Again, some dark areas in, inside the grains which are laying in the foreground. They make the edges softer. Don't need too much attention on them. Again, it's up to you to decide where you put the strongest contrast, where to put the brightest colors. All you need to do is just to paint a beautiful painting. Try to do your best according to your, to your best knowledge, to your best endeavors, which kind of we want to get some darker, even darker things by pulling grenade. The 
as you see, I just got rid of some details. Again, it's a balance between detailization and between the, the general, the common color stains we can see here we are I need to get these areas darker some areas a bit lighter in order to show this texture here it is I'm just thinking about those, thinking of those lines, you see, they aren't very, they aren't very beautiful while we have those ribs, look, one, two, three, four, we just count them, they are relatively, those areas, white areas, they are relatively similar and they just break the red area into again, one, two, three, four uh, similar areas, so we need to do something with that. Yeah, we're gonna change now the the areas. Here we can darken this particular place, this particular side with using even purple or mother lake. A purple gets it colder. And again, I will add more peel here. Here you are, you see. And maybe thinner. And in more red colors. So again, here we are, look. That's an important thing. We don't need too strong, too saturated red colors at the bottom of our pomegranate because they are transparent here so they don't have as much radiation as the uh, grains at the top have here we are so it gets better right you see just want to get some darkest, darkest things here, here. Well, as you see, it's again a balance between detailed painting and very free painting. It's a balance between detailization and so-called generalization. Maybe we can make the uh, peel thinner. Some areas which can, can be very beautiful. And just one, st one thing we still need. Just one thing we still need is our deep shadows beneath the objects. Those deep shadows will help us to emphasize the the reflection from the tablecloth 
on our objects. So let's do it. I'll, I'll start with purple, with violet, plus burnt umber, and those deep shadows gonna be the darkest, the darkest areas. And you see, as I paint them, the peel turns to be highlighted, and the shadows isn't as gray as it was. Here we are, a bit of shadow of the deep shadow beneath the grain here and there. So it contrasts. I just want to add some slight alteration to the form of our pomegranate here. I don't want it to look as a pear, you see, as a pear or as a bag. Here, that's better. And I, now we need some grayish color to color the background. Very soft edges. You don't need strong edges here, very contrasted. So the effect of horseshoe is is almost gone. We got rid of those I mean of the strong visual perception of the ribs. Now well, they are less intense. Yeah, here we are. We broke them up, we worked on details to the certain extent we painted our grains, pomegranate grains as as bright as possible and well contrasted even more when a more contrast between the peel and the grain here and I think just a little alteration this area just want to want it to look I don't want to look at round shaped because it's a breakage of the pomegranate doesn't need to be that round shaped and this blurring helps us again to perceive the light say like a magic and those blurrings sometimes are very necessary and look at this tiny brush stroke or finger stroke here I just can add something else like a glowing effect like a radiation coming from the pomegranate as it reflects the light and gives us that feeling that sort of feeling yeah.
there are details, those brush strokes, they are to, to help me. to change the some directions, how light flows. And I think here we are. Well, maybe can add some even grayer areas to some parts of its peel here and there. Yes, here we are. Here is our pomegranate, beautifully painted. And all we need to do is just to put our signature to some corner. Here we are. Like the video, put the thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, not to miss the video we're gonna make for you. We're gonna have very interesting video tutorials forthcoming. See you guys.